Hey everybody and welcome back to another video and today we're finally going to be taking a look at my designer aerial from the Ultimate Princess collection. And before we start, I'm Jamie and I like to make toy videos here on my channel. So make sure you like, subscribe and ring the notification bell if you would like to stay tuned for more toy video content. Okay, so I just finally received my designer Ariel and this is the first designer doll that I got from this collection. So I'm pretty excited to take a look at her. Alright, so for the box design, it has some seaweeds and bubble patterns with the Disney Designer Collection logo in the middle. On the bottom, it says Ariel Limited Edition 1 of 10,000. And it does have the uh, very consistent diamond patterns that they have been using in all of their visuals for this line. On the side, it says Ariel with a little crown on top. And on the back, it features the designer Ashley Lozada's photos and also her inspiration when she's designing this doll, which is the same one that they posted on the website. This size says Ariel again. Alright, so the box does have some um, shimmer in it, but overall it's very matte. Uh, none of these patterns are glossed or foiled like the dolls in the past. So there is some shine, just very minimal. If we take a look at the designer masquerade dolls from last year, you can see that it's very glossy, very shimmery, very iridescent, and overall I think uh, that gave off a little bit more luxurious feel to it, especially with the artwork in the back. Speaking of which, this whole designer line has been very absent of official artworks, and I think this might be the first line that doesn't feature like an official artwork on the dolls' boxes. I just wish as at least the logo and these uh, diamond patterns would have been at least gold foiled. That's what I wish. But still looks very pretty. Alright, so like always, they come with two doors that you can open that are attached with magnets. It comes with two pockets, just like the Premier Collection series, uh, where they hold the certificate on one side. Mine is something 4000, I can't see while I'm doing this voiceover. <laughs> and on the other side, it has a card that um, shows you the photo of the designer. And they're held together by little double sticky tapes on the back. So, this is the card. And there's nothing special about it, it's not shimmery or foil, but it does have the icon of Ariel's shoes on the back. But I just wish that they would have printed the designer's inspiration on this card as well. So um, the magnets on my doll are quite obvious. In the past they have done magnets too, but not as obvious like this one. So it's kind of ruining the illusion. <laughs> and on the inside of the doors, we have the diamond all over pattern with Ariel's little seashell icon in them. Uh, the plastic window inside does have a foil gold pattern, so that's good. All right, now it's time to take her out. So one thing I didn't like about this one is that the plastic top window is attached to the part with the doors. So the part with the dolls doesn't have anything protecting them on top uh, like this. So it's just see-through and open. So in the past with the villain dolls, like you could at least display them like this without the doors for people like me who have not enough space for all of them to be displayed with their doors. So that's something I wish they would have kept. Because right now, there's nothing protecting them from the dust on the top. But you we could still easily put something on top. But anyways, I kind of wish that they had kept it. And I like that, you know, the pattern is even on the back of the box as well. It's still Eric's castle with the ocean, just in a muted blue color. And I also love the steps on the bottom as well. And the color for this matches perfectly with the background because it kind of looks like sand. And it does have a little fuzzy kind of carpety feel to it. And boom, she's out of the box. Well, my camera decided that it didn't want to film me actually opening it, so I'm so sorry we're cutting right into the 360 view. But here is Ariel, and I really love that her overskirt is has a long train, even on this pedestal. Uh, it's still kind of touching the floor, so I really like that. And this is how the back piece looks like. It's also very beautiful from the back. And now let's go into the details. So first up, I want to show you guys how the back piece is attached. So on the back, there are two little plastic buttons where you can um, undo them to take off the back piece so that you can let down her hair. And the buttons are right there. And the other buttons on this part are there. I really love this piece. It's very creatively done to mimic the waves that, um, you know, that were always splashing behind her in the movie. 
And I also love this very iridescent shell sculpted piece as well. Kind of even looks like a peacock feather kind of thing. And there are gems on this mash layer as well to top off that wavy watery look. Okay, now let's go into Ariel herself. So first up, her hair can freely flow behind her once you've taken off the back piece. And I just love the way it's styled. It's gelled, but it's still squishy. It's not like hard rock solid gel. And um, it's very bouncy. It has a natural look and movement to it, which I really love because they usually mostly do a uh, bigger kind of waves and curls for Ariel. So I'm really loving this uh, more tinier ringlets kind of thing. And look at the way they bounce. And I also loving uh, the, the painted baby hairs on her as well. And it's not just like flat paint. It does feel like there's some texture on those paints. So it makes it more realistic, I suppose. And this is the side of her headband with the little seahorse with the gem. And it's, her skin is again glossed and very shimmery to make her look like she's out of the water. It's always a mixed reaction between the shiny skin. But for me, um, it depends on the doll. Sometimes I hate it. But for her now in this situation, I'm kind of okay with it. And attached to her headpiece are these pearls. And here is her purse, which is a little iridescent conch shell. And all the little metal hoops attaching the head sculpt, and, I mean like the head piece and the pearls are metal, so I'm really living for it. Right now I'm going to cut those off so that we can get a better look at her outfit. There we go. So her outfit is very intricately designed and put together. Um, so it does have these little metal hoops on the shoulder, which I like. Uh, because when you're putting the purse on, it stays there. And this is how the back looks like. And I really love the way the sequins shimmer. It does give off a lot of color, especially under light. Also on her skirt as well. So her skirt underneath has like two layers of this frilly cute kind of uh, skirt with the sequins still attached to them. And they are very iridescent. And for her overall skirt, it's a pleated kind of mesh skirt that starts off coral and turns ombres into this beautiful shade of blue to mimic the sea. And it has all these gem patterns stuck onto it that does go all the way around. But of course, more prominently featured on the front. And here we have her shoes. Her shoes are pearlescent and iridescent, has a little pearl on the tip. And also the winged uh, seashell pattern from her headdress, but sculpted a little differently. There we have her stand. I love the double steps and also the saddle stand as improved from the past dolls. And I was surprised to find out that the designer has a signature on the base of the stand. It's really special and must be really nice for the designers to have their work kind of celebrated in this way. All right, so I was very interested about how the, the, the sculpted shells are attached to the dress. So I'm going to take off her dress and show you guys a better look at how it's constructed underneath. So as you can see, it's actually stitched on the inside of her dress like this. But uh, so you can cut it off and take it off if you want to just use the bra on its own because it is a very beautifully sculpted bra. And here is her articulation. So she does have the waist joint, but she feels a little bit sticky, especially on the legs. Maybe the, the shimmery paint is what's making it. But I'm just really glad that they incorporated the new hand sculpts from the 17 inch dolls onto these designers because I just really love how natural and, you know, uh, dainty they look. For her legs, she have the rubber click knees, but some of the packaging did leave a bit of a dent on there. One final thing is that the sequins like to shed a lot, as you can see on her legs. And I've also had sequins been shedding on the table where I'm filming this, so you might want to handle it with care. So to summarize, my overall thoughts on this doll are particularly very good. I'm not going to touch on the design itself uh, because we've already gone through that in my reaction video. And so we know what the overall direction of this line is supposed to be. So I'm just going to just uh, judge on the execution of the detail. So overall, I think it's a pretty um, nicely executed doll. Um, I love the hair and the way it's styled. Um, I do love the face paint. It has to be one of my favorite aerial designer face paints from the Disney store. I love the sculpted details and how nicely and intricately made they are. I love the bra. The only thing I wish that it could have had a little bit of a hint of purple in there and I would have loved that. 
I love the sequence and the delicateness of the execution, also the intricate use of the pearls on her. I love the back piece, it's also one of my standouts, um, just very creatively done to take something from the movie and turn it into a like an actual tangible thing on a doll, so I really do like that. And overall, I'm very happy with my purchase on her. Um, like. She's not going to be my favorite Ariel doll from head to toe, but there are a lot of things that I like on her, especially the face, which is, I think, going to become my favorite Ariel face for the time being. I just love the fact that her brows are red and they're feathered and they are just the right touch of brownness in there. I don't know. And hair is always a big part for me when I'm buying a doll, so I just love the way they executed the hair on her as well. It's very thick, lots of hair, and it's styled very nicely and has a natural movement to it as well without being it overly gelled. But I am going to be restyling her hair. I mean, not a major one. Like, for me, Ariel's bangs are the most iconic part about her. So I want bangs on my Ariel doll. So I will be restyling her and posting her restyle photos on my Instagram. So if you want to check that out, you better go follow me at Chamie Creates on Instagram. But right now, thank you so much for watching. That was my video on the designer Ariel doll from the Disney store. So let me know in the comments below, did you get her? Uh, what are your thoughts about her? If you enjoyed the video, please like, thumbs up, subscribe, and share. It'll really help out my channel. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all soon in my next video. Bye!